So how are payers and providers using real-world evidence? Well, due to recent surveys, we know that only one in three managed care organizations consistently use real-world evidence to inform their decisions. And among professional guideline groups, we know that their use varies. It varies by group, it varies by the type of question or recommendation they're making, whether it's a diagnostic or a therapeutic, or whether they're assessing safety or efficacy. Now this is important if I'm a patient, it's important if you're a provider, it's important to payers, regulators, because real world evidence provides an understanding of what works best in the real world under usual care sit settings. There are barriers to the consistent use of real world evidence by payers and providers and professional guideline groups. We've identified four areas that we can work towards to try to overcome these barriers. These include ex increasing the accessibility of real world evidence, making sure that the study is designed to answer the question that researchers want, enhancing the quality and transparency of data, and evaluating the results. So let me go into each one of these in a bit more detail. So first, increasing the accessibility of real world evidence. Research is often designed by researchers, but it's meant to be used by people that may not have skills or training in research. As a patient or a provider or a payer, we need to make sure that the terms that we use in describing the research are consistent. And that often, when we have terms that are similar, we are clear on what it means, what the research is that's done, and how, these, how the terms are different. Second, we need to make sure that the studies are designed with the end user in mind. So this can be done by incorporating the end user in the study design as well as understanding what types of evidence is going to be needed to answer the questions they have. So for example, will a payer be willing to accept a randomized controlled trial only? Will they be willing to accept real world evidence in special populations? Or does it need to be a combination of multiple studies? The third bucket is to enhance the quality and transparency of the data and the research that's conducted. With the increasing availability of electronic health records, we have much richer, richer clinical data than we had when we utilized only claims analyses. The methods are improving, and as we become more transparent about what research is done and what the da underlying data is, we can increase the credibility, transparency, and understanding of what the research means. Lastly, we need to ensure that we evaluate the results. So how will patients and providers find out about real-world evidence? What are good practices for disseminating real-world evidence? What's the impact of utilizing real-world evidence on innovation for not only products but also healthcare in general? And most importantly, how can we ensure that the research that's conducted is actually utilized by patients and providers as they make their decisions? As we increase the accessibility, make sure the research is answering the right questions, is done in a correct way, and we understand the impact, we can overcome some of the barriers so real-world evidence is utilized in a more consistent and useful fashion.